Hello everybody, my name is Daniel. Today we're going to talk about privilege escalation. This is the first of a series in the Privesk uh, series I'm going to create for YouTube. Today we're going to talk about reuse passwords. <clears throat> so when you, you talk about reuse passwords, we talk about whenever you have your initial foothold, you need to Privesk or in a longer term privilege escalate yourself to a higher level of privileges. <clears throat> so usually you do horizontal at some point and then when, when you have enough privileges to do a vertical privesk then you go ahead and get your root but don't get too excited when you got your initial foothold because many people tend to think like so you got your dot 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 data access and i want to get root that is a bit too fast you know in my opinion take your time why don't we don't uh, just become Bob first or Louis or something like that. Why not just become a normal user before that? What is what is wrong with that? Because sometimes the dot 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 user, the dot dot data user for the for the web server, the Apache server, for example, that is a, a clear example, is probably tied up to some least privilege. And if you can horizontal privilege escalate yourself to another normal user, I would highly suggest you do that and then go away from that dot 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 data user and then try and get root. So that is the initial idea. However, reuse passwords. How many times have we seen this? Let me just minimize this so it's not disturbing the background. So whenever I see reuse passwords, you know, <clears throat> so let's assume that you got your initial foothold and you got your SSH key. All right, you're lucky. Why not try that for another user? Why not try it for the root? Why not try it for, you know, anything basically? What about, let's assume that you do not have an initial foothold, but do have some sort of local file inclusion going on. So you can see source code in the server. You can read the source code. You can see the initial password and the username used to access the database, you know, stuff like that. Maybe that password can be used to log in through SSH with maybe so why don't you try I've seen many times that people think oh but they, but but they thought about everything the system admins the programmers but they thought about everything every single small detail everything you can think of everything you can find on the internet everyone thought about everything and you just like oh, I, I, I don't think I can get further but that is not true people tend to forget people make mistakes Mistakes plus forget equal vulnerability. One of them equal vulnerability, and this is why you are here watching this video. I, I assume that is why you watch it. It's because you want to know how to attack servers better. So <clears throat> going back to the initial foothold, where was that image again? It's not in the browser. This is the one. So let's assume that you got your access to dot 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 data, and I say dot 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 is is it three Ws? It's just easy to say dot instead of W W W. But you hear the word dot, the U instead of dot. So yeah. So dot 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 data. You have access now, and you're trying to do some privilege. Now, what can you do to get privilege escalation? So on, so on. Now I'm going to talk about that in some other videos. This is just the first one talking about reuse passwords. So that is the only method I'm going to talk about today is reuse passwords. Try to SU, you know, go go into terminal and, and do like, so try and do whoop, <laughs> like SU something, you know, whatever. You know, I, I, I do have a root uh, on, on this machine. I don't think I can go to it on this particular uh, Kali installation just by typing a simple password. So <clears throat> this is out of the box, by the way. But if I have another user, I could definitely try and, and go to, you know, maybe maybe you can go to home and, and see which kind of, you know, uh, home uh, directories there are. If you can access, for example, let's say the etc password file, then you can get an idea of how many users there are. You know, you can see in the system, I do have a test user. <clears throat> I have a Kali user, which is very normal on a, on a Linux Kali system. <laughs> and I also have a root user. Now, everything here is daemon, bin, sys, game, man, whatever. All the way down looks like, you know, service stuff, you know, non-human uh, users. 
just to have a quick look. Did I ever do anything else other than the? I think I created test at some point. Test. Yeah, that was me. I created a really weird, weird user. <clears throat> I think I can issue test, you know, and and type test. And now I'm test, so you can write ID and stuff like that. So depending on depending on that, you know, you can try to issue into other users and guess their password. That is, by the way, have nothing to do with, you know, using reused passwords, but guessing is kind of not a bad idea, you know. Test is this, if you see this, for example, user, I would definitely just try to SU into that and then say, maybe they educate test now, one, two, three, four, five, six, or maybe just password. Try the normal things, you know. It's very common that people, that when they create stupid users, they also create stupid passwords. And if you can do, already now, a horizontal privilege escalation just by accessing a stupid user, you might even have more system rights than you anticipated. All right, so I guess number one clue here is check for use passwords. Take care.